John Cole with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And in this episode, we're going to do a battle of the three inch wide vertical feed shoot juicers. Uh, these are also known as slow juicers. And I do want to let you guys know that uh, the Kuvings whole slow juicer is the original vertical three inch wide feed shoot machine. All right. They have a patent on this technology and the only company that I'm aware of in the United States that is licensed to use the same patent is Omega. And Omega makes the MMV700 model, which basically works identically to the model that I have here, the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer uh, C7000. And I know I get the question all the time, John, compare the Kuvings to this vertical slow juicer, whether that's the optimum, you know, three inch wide vertical slow juicer or this brand or this brand and people are emailing me new brands each and every day to, to compare and test and I apologize, I can't test every juicer on the planet, um, you know, based on what I've seen and my previous experience with some of the, what I call knockoff juicers, they don't perform as well as this one and I simply don't want to waste my time. That being said, every once in a while, I do want to test some of the machines to find out how good they actually are. And I know that some of you guys may not want to spend top dollar to get a vertical feed shoot juicer, a three inch wide vertical slow juicer. And you know, I would encourage you guys to save up, right? It's far easier and better to buy a good unit the first time with a long warranty. You know, the Kuvings whole slow juicer has a nice long 10 year warranty instead of buying an inexpensive machine that might be half the price or a third of the price even and you might only get you know a one year a two year maybe even only a 90 day warranty or maybe even no warranty whatsoever and what good is a juicer that you buy that you're trying to make health changes that you might be having some life threatening illness that you're trying to overcome by getting more of the fresh vegetables especially the leafy greens in you or you want to lose weight and you don't want to just lose weight now you want to lose weight now and literally for the rest of your life by getting on a juicing lifestyle that's what I do every day I juice once a day that's one of my meals a day is fresh juice whether that's you know uh, cucumber celery juice or whether like yesterday well, I had a uh, cactus fruit juice with coconut and today will be I think uh, maybe like a uh, carrot uh, apple and celery and you know what what good is a juicer that you buy that you spend all this money on even if it is less money if it breaks and you can't get any parts and then you have to throw it away right what a horrendous use of resources of plastic of shipping of all the m material that went into the cheap juicer that now has to go to the landfill because a lot of these inexpensive juicers are literally throwaway juicers you know and let's be honest about that right if you buy a good name brand juicer you know that's going to be around for a long time and supported with parts for many years to come. So uh, anyways, what we'll be doing today is we'll be testing the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite Model C7000, that's this one in the middle, against some knockoff brands or knockoff models. So uh, the one over here is known as a Flexion 3-inch wide feed shoot juicer and you guys can see it has a plain box, right? <laughs> some of these Chinese companies kind of don't put in the extra effort to make the product look nice maybe they're just cutting all corners and if they're cutting corners with a box in the colors and the pictures on the box maybe they're cutting corners on the juicer too because they're just trying to pump out stuff to make money really quick and so over on this side we got the Argus LE a three inch wide vertical feed shoot juicer and this one I don't know if it's so much of a knockoff it does have a three inch wide feed shoot but it has a whole different juicing technology that you guys will see in a minute Anyways, I've done an unboxing on the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite C7000 previously, so I'll put a link down below this video in the description area of this video uh, to the link so you guys can see me unbox this. But what I thought I'd do in this episode is actually unbox the other two machines, you know, this uh, guy in a white box and this guy here in the brown box. So let's start over on this guy, uh, the Flexion. And so when you open this guy up, Basically, you're going to get a, a generic instruction manual, and it's so generic it even has like a, 
a white sticker over part of it so you can't even see what it says it just says slow juicer instruction manual and I guess the uh, something's you can't even see what it is but anyways it basically tells you all the different parts uh, really generic um, instruction manual uh, the English definitely could be better and uh, in the back it has the uh, technical details slow juicer 110 volts 200 watts 43 rpms AC motor maximum operation time 30 minutes it's very interesting so a lot of these inexpensive machines have in my opinion underpowered motors and you know let you guys know this unit is from China manufactured and this unit is manufactured also in China the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite that I'll be showing you guys in a little bit is made in South Korea and that is where the uh, vertical slow juicers originated. Alright so uh, taking this apart no, out now we've got the uh, motor base and actually this is a nice uh, heavy motor base pretty basic I mean they're basically just a plastic housing with a motor and uh, you know coming up and actually on the top they got some uh, nice push buttons here get that out of the way let's see next coming out we got this box of uh, accessory parts and if we open that up we got the uh, main juicing uh, body here we're just gonna assemble it for now and then we're gonna go over there all the specifics it's like that just goes on top right there like so and then uh, also in here we got a pusher and we got two juice catch cups and we got a juicing brush and other than that there's no visible markings it's just it's a plain white box so it's a, like a generic juicer alright so we take out these uh, juice catch cups kind of a smoke color And it looks like just standard juice catch cups and a cleaning brush. So this is the Flexion Slow Juicer. We'll just call it the uh, LF6218B. So that's what this guy looks like. Let's go ahead and uh, open up this guy on the other side. So this 3 inch wide feed chute is a little bit of a misnomer. Although that feed chute may be 3 inches wide. Um, there's basically like a little smaller feed chute here, which is maybe like, I don't know, two inches by one and a half inches approximately. And then over on this side, there's like a little thing you got to open up. So this is like a trap door. Like you put the item here and then it drops in. So it doesn't quite have a full three inch wide feed chute like the Kuvings, but we'll be showing you guys more about this in a minute. All right, so uh, on to this next guy here. So on to the Argus here, we're going to have to go ahead and uh, slice this box open here. Now a lot of these uh, imported machines may be available on many different websites. At Discount Juices we strive to sell only the name brand high-end machines. And if we do find a machine from China that performs well, that has a nice long warranty, we'll be glad to offer it. Unfortunately, you know, I haven't found that to be the case up to this point. Anyways, here's some uh, information, the brochures that come with this machine. Oh, and there's no warranty information that came with the first unit. Once again, unboxing this, is just basically you just get right into the parts inside here. And uh, that's pretty much empty. And so here's the machine. Hey, that's kind of nice. It comes like fully assembled in the box. Now, the immediate thing I want to say about this machine is upon picking it up, it's like really light like this kind of really concerns me a little bit at least that juicer has some weight to it which means the motor has some good nice strong windings in it uh, this machine when I picked it up it's like rather light which means you know it might have a really inexpensive cheap motor and that inexpensive cheap underpowered motor may break over time and you know you guys are never gonna know this by just buying a juicer online you know if you just see the price oh it's less price it looks the same I'm gonna buy it You'll never know that they're using really cheap quality parts. I mean, what do you think, man? You guys get what you pay for. All right, so this machine is pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, my God, they think of new stuff all the time. So this has a three-inch wide feed chute, but you have this little part on top, which we could put stuff in this little hole. Or once again, this is like the trapdoor thing. You put an apple here, then you spin it around <laughs> to dump it in. All right, and then uh, let's see what kind of parts we have on this. 
So on the parts on here, we get one little pusher that goes right in the middle there. Man, this is kind of hokey dokey. And then of course we have your uh, cleaning brush. And man, look at this. This in my opinion is a joke. We have two couch cups. Look at how small these couch cups are. 600 milliliters compared to a thousand milliliters. It's like these things are too small for any like serious juicer. I mean, I could see this juicer as like a toy. I mean, for me, for sure, it's so light. It's, it's literally like a toy. And it uh, looks like on here they give you uh, two different screens. I'll have to take a look and see if there's a different, different uses of the screens and a cleaning brush. Anyways, I'm going to get these guys set up, washed, and we're going to come back at you with all three juicers and we're going to compare them side by side. So now I have all three of the three inch wide vertical feed chute juicers out and we're going to compare them one at a time. But before I do, I want to let you guys know that the Argus LE juicer in the instruction manual had a 20 minute use cycle. So that's not uncommon on many juicers, you know, on many juicers you should turn the machine off after you use it a specific period of time. I've seen that period of time sometimes be as low as 15 minutes all the way up to 30 minutes or so. And then afterwards you're supposed to let the uh, juicer uh, cool down. And generally the shorter the usage time, uh, that means the more maybe cheaply the motor is made, the more ineffective it is at cooling itself and it just can't be run that long. So uh, each one of these machines, while they may look similar because they are all juicers, they're all vertical juicers, they all work a little bit differently, actually. The two on this side have more of a traditional format where it has basically uh, the auger inside that basically grinds up the produce, crushes and squeezes out the juice, it comes out the juicing screen, and the wiping blade is spinning around to keep the juicing screen clean. Over on this 3-inch wide feed chute juicer, the Argus LE, this is actually more of a knockoff, in my opinion, of the uh, Juice Presso that I reviewed maybe last year. Uh, this machine actually has no um, separate juicing screen and auger. It's integrated. It's an auger with the juicing screen integrated. So that's quite interesting. But this machine, unlike the Juice Presso, has a 3-inch wide uh, feed chute here that I suppose if you broke this piece off, you could probably feed things in, but they don't want you feeding things in like the whole way. Now, I want to let you guys know that I've actually been to Kuvings, their R&D department, you know, the research and development. That's where they like, you know, do testing on nutritional stuff, and they actually, you know, have gone through many revisions and molds and models of this machine to ensure when you buy a Kuvings machine, you put an apple down there, the apple just doesn't sit and spin inside the machine. The machine will actually crunch it up, swallow it up, and give you guys the juice. You know, I'm not so sure about these machines here. I don't know if they've had the optimal design. This one just kind of looks like it's a chute that goes down and goes in. And similar with this, um, you know, literally the companies in China, they don't do a lot of this R&D work. They make the machine so it works and they sell it. And then they say, adios, amigos, and they'll probably never see you again. And you'll never get a warranty out of them. But these are only my opinions, of course, on these machines as somebody who reviews machines professionally. All right. So uh, I guess with that, let's go ahead and go over each part one at a time, starting with the top part. So this is the feed chute on the Argus. Let's see, a little bit hard to remove there. Basically, it's a uh, one piece. And if we tap the plastic, I don't know if you guys could hear that. It's like a really high pitched. Let me see if there's any notes on here about what it is. So generally when, I, when it's a high pitch plastic, that means it's a uh, polycarbonate style plastic or other type of plastic, which is not BPA free. So they have a standard warning uh, sticker on there. And then uh, over on the Kuvings, a lot more durable piece. If we tap this, listen carefully. It's a lot more lower and resonant. This piece is actually uh, the Triton piece, so that is BPA free. Once again, here's this one. Lot higher and you can tell also by when you flex it right this one's a lot more solid and this one like wants to flex a little bit easier all right then over to the last guy the flexion slow juicer uh, this this top is a piece of work right one of the things I'm always concerned about with any juicer is cleaning the machine so cleaning this machine 
I mean, it kind of has a funnel here, a funnel over here, and if you get something that gets stuck over here, I don't know, you got to like get in here and clean it with this flap coming in and out, kind of a pain. I guess you could kind of get in from the bottom and wipe it around. But man, this, in my opinion, would be a cleaning nightmare, right? As to this piece on cleaning, it's fairly easy. You know, you could get right up in there, not too difficult. Although, you know, due to the angle of this, a little bit hard to get in there. And once again, you got that rotating piece, you know, to, uh, that rotates around and this is not really removable. So cleaning in there might be difficult. But on the Kubings, you know, check it out. You could easily get in here from one side or the other. I mean, I could see all the way through there really easily. And so just so looking at the tops of these guys, although these are three inch wide feed chutes, it's kind of a misnomer because this feed chute is, you know, basically uh, compressed down into a smaller chute. Um, I don't know, what is that, like one, maybe like one inch or so, one, one, and, a, one and a quarter inches. And uh, same thing with this guy. Well, this may have a three inch wide uh, chute. You know, you could put whole apples in here and drop them in. But the problem is this chute, as I mentioned before, is rather small. And once again, this guy, in my opinion, wow, look at that, really tinny, also the polycarbonate material. In addition, you know, one of the challenges that I've seen with vertical slow juicers is the locking mechanism, uh, you know, that locks the uh, machine on, and this one looks to be fairly thin. Over on the Kubings, actually, it's a, let's see, it's a little bit thicker, but also it's reinforced with some uh, structural plastic components to make it a little bit stronger so it kind of locks and holds in and uh, on this guy here on this guy here this is very interesting this is actually a two-piece uh, top housing which is actually glued on so you know in my opinion if this was to fail which would likely happen if the machine gets backed up uh, this piece would just actually separate off and break which would probably not be too good of a thing all right so that's all these parts next we got the augers coming out so first on the Argus machine here, let's pull out the auger. So this auger is rather unique. Oh, it has a hole in the top, which is rather interesting, actually. I don't know if I like that, man. That's, that's going to be a, really a nightmare if pulp gets in or clean. Uh, this auger has an auger plus then a screen integrated into the bottom of it. Next, we'll pull out the Kubings Whole Slow Juicer uh, auger. And then finally, the uh, Flexion slow juicer auger so while these some of these augers may look the same like these two guys they're a little bit different all right so first off this guy I mean I know on the Kuvings this is a GT Altum and if, I don't know if you guys can even hear me tap that this is like a solid core auger nice and heavy and a really deep uh, sound when I tap it this one really high pitch. I mean, this might also be out of polycarbonate, which would not be a good thing. The ultimate material is eight times harder plastic than other plastics. And, you know, the auger does the most of the crunching up of the vegetables. And if you have a auger that's uh, not as strong, it may break during use or, um, o or over time. And then on this auger, this auger, once again, also seems pretty, uh, you know, pretty strong and durable. Now, comparing these two augers, while they may look the same and look similar, I could just notably see by looking at it, uh, the quality difference. So uh, number one, like the molding parts, like this doesn't look quite as molded as uh, uniformly, kind of just kind of looks slapped together in my opinion. And then uh, let's see, on the augers, they, they both look fairly similar actually, but underneath they look a lot different. And I hope you guys could see that on the camera there. But uh, on this guy, basically, you've got plastic gearing on the bottom, as well as this is all plastic on the bottom, right? And then you've got a recess uh, underneath here, which is, which is a good thing, because it allows for pulp to go up in there, which is, uh, you know, prevents backup and, and jamming. But over on the Kuvings, it's a little bit different, you know. Number one, we got this stainless steel insert here. The stainless steel insert here is there for a very important reason, so you don't get basically plastic on plastic contact, which may mean you might get plastic on your juice. In addition, the inset here is a lot more deep, so you could actually easily get your finger in there to clean it out. This is going to be a lot harder to clean. And, uh, and then finally, the other thing that's different about this is that actually there's no gears on the bottom of this machine. The gears can be difficult to clean, stains will get in there and all this stuff. 
and uh, Kuvings has eliminated the gears on the bottom of the C7000 machine now. Well then, talking about this auger, this auger is actually, if you look underneath it, it's hollow underneath, and uh, this has an integrated screen, and if we look underneath there, it's totally hollow. This is a really lightweight, light um, auger, and you know, to me, like, with this being open underneath, a lot harder to clean, lots of nooks and crannies for food particles to get stuck, bacteria to potentially accumulate. And uh, this is the little screen here on the Argus machine. Now I want to compare the heart of the juicers, which are the juicing screens and the wiping blade. I'll talk about the Argus in a second, it's a little bit different, but uh, here they are. As you guys can see, the Kubings has a lot less uh, area to clean because it actually is a little bit, uh, you know, not as large of a piece. In addition, you'll see on the Flexion, it's open on the bottom. And on the Kuvings, it's closed on the bottom. I find that the juicers that are open on the bottom uh, may tend to leak more juice on top of the motor body housing, depending on the seal that's installed inside the machine. Both of these have an automatic wiping blade. Uh, this one seems to be a lot more rigid uh, than the one on the Kuvings, which is you know a little bit more uh, softer plastic. So I'm not exactly sure if this is you know better to flex around when it's uh, spinning and cleaning the juicing screen or whether this one is better, I'm thinking most of the ones I've seen have been more flexible. They also have the silicone wiping blades which are, seem to be fairly similar. Now, the main differences with these screens are number one, the density of screen holes. So the Kuvings has smaller holes and actually a lot more of them, whereas actually this one has uh, larger holes and less holes. And uh, I, I think that's the same with the top and the bottom set of screen holes. You know, there's a lot less holes on the Flexion. Does that mean there's going to be less juice coming out because, you know, the juice can't come out if it's just like solid pieces. In addition, you know, I'm seeing some plastic residual around the base and uh, all the pulp will need to come through the bottom uh, hole here on the screen as it ejects out the juicer. This has been known as a blockage port on many juicers. And actually on the Kuvings, it looks like the size where the pulp has to come out is actually a little bit smaller. But yeah, other than that, the screens look similar. Oh, and when I run my fingers on the screen between how the screen mates between the plastic and the stainless steel, when I do it on Kuvings, it's pretty much like the same plane. Like there's like no indentations or ridges. But when I do that on the Flexion, you know, I feel that like the stainless steel is not at the same level, like the same level. It's like maybe a little bit higher. So this may cause some challenges with the auger scraping or something later on just doesn't seem to be quite of as high of a quality piece. I mean, of course, the machine is less expensive. And then actually over on the uh, Argus, this is the juicing screen on this guy, and comparing that to a standard juicing screen, this has a lot less screen holes for juice to come out of. So does this mean you're gonna get less yield? Well, I'm not exactly sure, I would kind of guess, and in the past it has been true that this style machine makes less yield, but I'll be putting it to the test in just a little bit. But yeah, this one has a lot less screen area due to, you know, there's just whole areas that just don't have any screen and no holes. That's because this is the, uh, the, the part that actually reinforces and holds this screen together without breaking. All right, final pieces. We got the juicing bowl. So this juicing bowl is actually nice and small. I do how, like how they have a cutout here so you can actually uh, get your finger in it to clean all the pulp. This one does actually have a... Uh, a little flap here to pull out when cleaning, a silicone flap which keeps back pressure on the pulp to keep it inside the machine, as well as a spout cap here. And uh, the grinding is actually done in this chamber through this uh, through these plastic ribbings. Oh, and then on the bottom of this piece it actually says PC. So when it says PC, that doesn't stand for politically correct, it stands for polycarbonate. So this is uh, definitely uh, does contain the BPA material would not be my first choice. And then the uh, gasket inside here looks like it has a decent gasket. Maybe like two or three different areas to prevent uh, leakage coming out. But yeah, that's pretty much basic on this guy. And then once again over on the Kuvings, uh, this guy actually has no uh, silicone flap that you need to un that you need to pull out after every juicing and put in before you juice. You don't have to remember to do that on this machine. 
This machine works a bit differently. <clears throat> this actually has no flap and the restriction is actually just the size of the hole here. On the bottom of this machine there's actually a built-in um, gearing that turns this little uh, white gear here that actually turns the automatic wiping blade. And then over on this guy it has a nice uh, heavy duty spout cap and uh, once again it has the hole here where the pulp has to eject out. Now I want you guys to note the position of the little spinner here. Uh, the spinner there actually is uh, spinning as a juicer is uh, making the juice and on certain juicer models but not the C7000 the spinner may introduce more pulp in your juice if you have an open screen bottom like on the Flexion because this is a closed screen bottom this will not put excess pulp in your juice because normally the spinner spins around and it basically will sweep pulp into your juice as you're making it but as I said that doesn't happen on the Kuvings and then uh, also this piece not high and tinny sound, deep resonant sound. This is the Eastman Triton, the BPA free material. Finally, let's go ahead and take off the bowl on this guy. Once again, you know, just looking at this guy and this guy, uh, big difference. Although they may look similar, you know, this one, once again, high pitch. I believe this to be polycarbonate also. And, uh, you know, this has uh, that flap on the bottom. And oops, and I just pulled it off. And in my opinion, some of these inexpensive machines have really cheap, inexpensive posts that I've broken off in the past. In addition, this has a pulp flap, but it's once again really inexpensive, really cheap. I'd be uh, concerned about breaking it. Actually, here's another piece of uh, plastic just hanging out, a little plastic shard. And then uh, once again, that gear spinner is in probably the most horrible place you could put it. The gear spinner is actually right next to the feed chute so as the um, as it's spinning around it's going to actually totally put pulp in the juice you're creating. In addition this spinner here is spinning around really tight. I don't know if it should even be that tight. I guess it works but that might scrape plastic. And then uh, once again this uh, center gasket here looks to be fairly good. I'm glad they raised it up. That prevents some leakage but if this backs up so much inside this will still leak on you, but they do have a nice gasket in there that's sealed quite well. Other things that I always like to look for when checking out juicers is when you put the juicing screen in there, which it goes like this, uh, you know, once you have it in there, can you move it? So we got the screen in there, and as you see, you know, I got, I don't even know, like an eighth of a turn on it as it's even in there. So this is not good. This will cause you know, excess grading of plastic on plastic from like the bottom of the juicing screen to the bottom of the bowl. And uh, mainly that's due to the fact that this um, is just not precisely engineered and it has two locking points. So it locks the screen in from this point and from this little point. And then if we say we take the Kuvings here, uh, the Kuvings actually kind of uh, has uh, three different locking points. One, two, three. And we put this guy over in here. We try to rock that. I mean, it's pretty rock solid. I mean, it moves like a, a hair. It moves like a hairline. But other than that, it's really not moving. And I mean, this is what you get. You know, this is what you pay for when you're buying a Kuvings. You're buying a properly engineered, properly designed, using the proper plastics to create a juicer that's going to give you many years of trouble-free service. You know, with excess moving and wearing of the parts and lower quality plastic, you know, that's definitely not a good outlook for long-term success in my opinion. The next thing I want to do is actually weigh the weight, the base of the motors here. The Kubings unit is uh, 240 watts, nice and heavy. The Argus is actually 150 watts and actually this is lighter than I would think. The Flexion unit here, wow it's actually rather heavy as well and it's 200 watts. And I want to show you guys like how well this is engineered. Up on this guy, there's basically one plastic piece. There's no rubber gaskets or anything like that. So it looks really clean. It's going to be a lot easier to clean. Whereas on both these guys, you know, there's a little uh, rubber gasket here. And this rubber gasket here is like, it's not even flat. It looks like it's kind of deformed. But anyways, you pull this guy off, which is really thin. And there's all the screws here. And if you get juice in here, they're going to actually leak through this gasket because it doesn't seal well and then go through the screws and then end up in the motor, which is not good for long-term motor durability. 
And uh, same thing over on this guy. This actually has a two gasket, so there's actually a small gasket on the motor shaft because they are concerned that it will leak um, juice through here and then get into the motor, which will cause premature motor failure. So there's one gasket there, and then even furthermore, they got another gasket that are actually that's hiding the screw the screws that hold this together, and they look like really inexpensive screws to me. And this gasket came came off really easy. So yeah, I'm gonna have to give this this one to the the Kuving. They definitely got a much better design on that. Next, what I thought I'd do for you guys actually, we're gonna go ahead and weigh out the the base, the motor, right? The motor is probably the heart of the juicer, and if you don't have a powerful motor, it's not properly designed, you know, your juicer is not going to last a long time, and you won't be able to use it for as long of a period before you need to turn it off and have it cool. So let's go ahead and turn on my scale here, get the scale up here. So one of the things on the arc is I want to point out, it actually only has a two-prong uh, uh, plug here, which I like to have the ground plug on there, and in addition, if we look on the bottom, you know, it's a product name, slow juicer, model AL-B6000, voltage 110, frequency 50, 60 hertz, power 150 watts, and it says uh, manufactured by, but there's no like UL or no, you know, certification of its safety. And so that concerns me a little bit. I'd hate to have one of you guys buy an inexpensive juicer. I saved a bunch of money, John. And then the thing starts a fire in your house because it's on the ground and it's not certified for certain electrical standards, um, you know, like they, in my opinion, they should be in the United States. All right, so this guy, check it out. You guys can see that? Five pounds, you know, for the uh, motor unit on the Argus LE. Maybe. That's pretty good, John, that's five pounds. Well, hey, let's check out the Kuvings. This guy is significantly heavier, and once again, it has a three-prong plug, and if we look on the bottom of this guy, this is a, you know, C-U-L-U-S, and so this is U-L listed. You know, Kuvings have gone through the, the painstaking process of getting the proper electrical certifications and paying all the money that it requires. Once again, companies that want to just put a machine to market, you know, they may not get the proper electrical certifications just so that they could sell their machine. You know, I would encourage you guys to do things right instead of wrong. And you know, you would never really know this by just, oh, the juicer's half the price or a quarter of the, or one third of the price, right? So look at this. This unit is 10.9 pounds. That's, or, yeah, 10.9, 10.8 pounds. That's almost 11 pounds alone on this motor base. And that's like over twice the weight of the Argus LE. All right, let's go ahead and check out this Flexion unit base. Now this guy's heavy, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, hopefully it's just not filled with lead, but it looks like to be uh, pretty durable. This one does not have the UL mark for the United States, but it has a CE and CB mark, and actually the label is a uh, bit crooked, <laughs> which is kind of funny. And uh, this, be, this is 200 watts. So once again, this guy is also actually 10.9 pounds. So, you know, the interesting thing to me is, you know, in the machine is the motor, like, housing that holds the motor. Is that making up most of the weight? They could make a really heavy motor housing. But what you really want is actually the windings on the motor to have a lot of copper on there. That's going to mean you're going to have, you know, more power in the motor. I'm not about to take these machines apart to find out, but, you know, just looking at the... The base of this looks like the motors is definitely smaller on uh, this guy, the Flexion, than the Kuvings. So what do we learn? The Argus is like half the weight of these two guys. Uh, the Kuvings is basically overall designed better. I guess what I want to do next is actually we're going to go ahead and get these machines uh, reassembled. And then we're going to go ahead and do a juice off of equal amounts of carrots, celery, and apples in each machine to show you guys how long it takes to juice in each machine and how much yield we get out of each machine. So now I'm ready to get juicing in these machines, but before I do, what I thought I'd do for you guys is actually turn the machines on to let you guys hear what they sound like and actually let you guys see what they look like when the machines are running. First, we'll start with the uh, Argus LE. We'll turn this guy on and listen carefully. So you hear it, it's going, but there's like 
there's like a weird noise and also if you look at this very closely you can like uh, look at you can see the uh, whole top of the housing move now seeing the top of the housing move may be considered normal on some juicers and some housings will move even on some of the high-end machines but uh, generally to me it means that the machine is unbalanced and you know some level of unbalanced is acceptable on some machines but you know I don't know this one seems to be moving a lot let's go ahead and check the Kuvings if we turn this on I do see a slight amount of movement with the top housing much less than the Argus also has a nice solid sounding feel and finally over on the Flexion unit we're gonna hit the on button and once again actually that has probably the most movement out of all these let's go ahead and hit the stop button now the Flexion there's like some LED a little light that lights up on the top so if this unit is plugged in uh, you know there's a little light that's on which means it's actually consuming power whereas all these these other two machines actually have an on off switch that actually turn off all the power so this is quite interesting I'm really interested to see how each one of these guys will perform I think what I want to do next is actually uh, get the produce out and do the official weigh-in alright so now let's do the official weigh-in I have three platters of produce ready to juice in all these machines seven carrots three apples and two pieces of celery carefully washed prepared and weighed out for you guys So let's show you guys the weights on the scales let's go ahead and show you guys the weights on the scales over on the scale for the Argus looks like we have one one three five grams over on the scale for the Kuvings whole slow juicer elite looks like we have one one three five grams and then over on the Flexion juicer looks like we have one one three five grams so it looks like we have a fair and even amount of produce so now that we've got the weigh-in all done we're going to go ahead and remove these scales and what we're going to do is we're going to set up the juicers to juice now I'm not going to use the included catch cups that come with each juicer since they're all different I know that some people on YouTube making comparison videos use different sized catch cups. I don't believe in that. I have uh, similar catch cups which are basically anchor hawking uh, four cup glass uh, measuring cups. So that way we're juicing um, into the same container so that each, uh, when we measure the juice, you know, we could measure it and compare them against one another. If you put them in different containers, <laughs> they may not be accurate. And then uh, we're just going to go ahead and catch the uh, pulp in some standard containers here. Uh, I will not necessarily be measuring the pulp out that comes out of each machine. So now we're all ready and set up to juice and now we're going to get juicing. Now I'm going to institute a few rules. Number one rule is I'm not going to use the pusher, right? One of the worst things you could do in my opinion is use a pusher for a vertical single auger machine. Uh, you know, if you use the pusher that means you may be pushing the items in too quickly which will, which will cause the juicer to jam up, back up, produce more pulp in the juice and not work as efficiently. Uh, in my opinion the pusher should only be used to unclog produce that is actually not going in the machine because the machine is not working properly or the produce is stuck because the machine wasn't designed properly to just literally pull the produce in. Good vertical auger juicers provided you pre-cut certain produce items um, you know will auto feed the produce and that's very important to me uh, number two rule is I'll be timing this and so we got a stopwatch here on my iPhone and we'll show you guys how long it takes to uh, juice in each of the machines and I guess that's pretty much it I think I'll start on this side and move this direction so I guess we're gonna hit start and then turn on this Arg Argus and uh, start juicing in it now I am juicing apples, carrots, and celery today. Um, I will not be pre-cutting the celery. Normally I recommend and encourage you guys to only pre-cut your celery if juicing in a vertical uh, single auger juicer. Any model, I recommend cutting it into eighth inch pieces. I'll be juicing the celery last just to see how well or how not well the juicer deals with uncut celery because I know most people unfortunately will not pre-cut their celery. And so I'll be rotating the, air, the carrots and the apples as I put them in and then put in the celery last. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and hit the start button. Turn on 
And let's uh, first start with an apple, drop that in there, and we gotta flip the switch. And you can see the apples, you know, starting to get crunched up here. The Argus is actually juicing it, pulling it in without any problems. There is some apple kind of sitting up here in the top, just sitting and spinning, literally uh, not getting sucked in. I wonder how long we'll have to wait to see it, if it ever does get sucked in or not. This will increase the juicing time. It looks like the apples are just really not getting sucked in, so we're gonna go ahead and put a carrot in. Now, the problem is, in the hole of this Argus on the top, you know, it does not allow my carrot to go in. It's a little bit too fat of a diameter, so we're gonna have to cut that. So, what's the use of a three inch wide feature if you can't even put a carrot in? This one basically is sticking in and barely fits in. Alright, so finally it's sucking in that carrot, putting out the juice, the pulp is coming out the other side. On the carrot, what I've decided to do, if we break it into little pieces, then we can put it in a little hopper and flip it over and flip it in there. And uh, now the piece just will drop in. So far so good, but you can really see the motor start to slow down as I'm putting in these carrots. Wow, it's like really going slow. It's like slow motion now. Put another carrot in there. You know, I did see a video review of the Argus and conveniently they left out the part when they were juicing. They just kind of showed you like, um, you know, before and then after juicing. They didn't show you actually the juicing process. Once again, let's dunk it in apple, see how that works. This apple is kind of getting hit with the auger, but the apple's actually rising up and falling back down and is really not getting sucked in. Some pieces are trying to get crunched off of it, but really it's just not sucked in. Not getting sucked in. Alright, finally it's starting to uh, cut up the apple and suck it in there. I could probably be waiting all day for this to suck in. Let's go ahead and maybe help it with a little carrot. We'll push it in with a little carrot there. And now we'll dump in the next carrot here. Alright, you can literally hear the motor starting to strain and really slow down a bunch. Like that's this underpowered motor in my opinion, you know. It, this machine is really light, half the weight of these two over on this side. Alright, this carrot barely fits in there. I could squeeze it in there and drop it in. Pulp's coming out like it should and the juice is coming out. Can you complain so much? Well, I mean, every juicer, like I say, has their pros and cons. This is a really inexpensive machine, not super high quality. Just by the sounds of it, I'm scared that over the long term it would break. I mean, this is the first time I'm actually using this machine. All right, once again, this carrot's too big for the trapdoor thing. We're gonna break this in half, put it in there, and drop it in. Carrots don't look, or the apples don't look like they auto feed if you don't uh, cut them unless you actually push them in or use something else to push them in. All right, last carrot going in the Argus. Wow, I'm concerned this machine's gonna stop, man. It's kinda crazy. All right, final thing, we're gonna put in those last two pieces of celery. Now, I do not recommend doing this, I'm just doing this to see kind of what happens. We uh, crunch that down so it fits in there. Looks like it's juicing the celery, no problem. And now let's go ahead and put the last piece of celery in there. Alright, so it's crunched up the celery and we have lots of celery actually sitting up in the top of the auger. It's actually not getting pushed down in the machine. I mean, maybe I'll wait until I see the pulp stop ejecting here because Basically, this auger is not really going to suck anything else into it. A really good vertical single auger juicer will actually suck in the majority of the produce that you put in. 
But yeah, this is just spinning, so this is really going to hurt the yield on the Argus LE juicer. Looks like uh, no more juice is coming out. We'll try to stop it and hit reverse and see if that helps it to unjam it. And then we'll hit start again. Let's see if that works. All right, so that helped uh, get some of that produce in there. So this is a technique you guys can use. Hit reverse one more time and uh, see if we get some more juice out of it. All right, so we got all the pulp. We'll be checking the pulp out later. Looks like we're pretty much done on the Argus. Turn that baby off. And how long did we take actually to juice? Looks like it took uh, nearly six minutes to juice in the Argus. Um, to me, that's probably quite a long time considering we only juice a little bit over two pounds of ju uh, produce. So we're gonna hit the reset here. We're gonna start cleaning up the table a little bit and we're gonna get ready to juice in the Kuvings whole slow juicer. All right, let's juice in the Kuvings. Once again, hit the start button there, make sure it's running, turn this on and just start dunking in carrots. Now, this one has a nice solid motor feel, much more powerful 240 watt motor uh, in the Kuvings whole slow juicer elite. Drop that in. There is a safety blade that doesn't allow the apple to go in, so we're going to use a carrot to push it past that. And we'll let the apple sit on top. And you guys probably can't see that so well because this is a smoked top, but pretty much the whole apple was crushed up piece by piece and then sucked in the machine, something that wasn't happening on the Argus. Let's see, dump in the next carrot there. Looks like the carrot pretty much got all chopped up. No problem, no slowing down on the Kuvings whole slow juicer elite. Put our next carrot in, I mean, our next apple in there, push it in uh, with that carrot, sit on top, and once again, that apple is getting fully crushed up and sucked in without any further input by me by having to push it in or do anything else. This is really a good sign that they've designed this properly. So, all the RD work they've done there at NUC Korea. Uh, Kuvings has definitely paid off. All right, let's put another apple in there. Once again, the apples really do well in the Kuvings whole slow juicer elite. Literally piece by piece gets crunched up and then sucked in the machine. Let's go ahead and put the next uh, carrot in there. This is going significantly quicker uh, than the Argus LE machine. Literally the carrots just basically just get crunched up and the juice comes out. I mean, this is what you get when you pay for a good quality machine. I mean, this may have been a third of the price, but you know, you guys get what you pay for. This machine is just going to be um, solid for you without any kind of hassles or any kind of rinky dink kind of stuff, in my opinion. All right, now we got that last carrot going in there. Uh-oh, <laughs> the Kuvings stopped, so we're gonna hit, hit the reverse there and hit forward again. All right, that was our large, rather fat, large diameter carrot. And uh, let's go ahead and put that celery. Once again, I do not recommend putting in uncut celery like this. I'm just doing this to see actually literally what happens. So far, so good. The Kuvings has actually very minimal kind of like pulp residue up around the top that actually did not get fit in. And let's go ahead and put in that last uh, piece of celery in there. All right, looks like it's crunched up fairly good. Much better than the Argus having some challenges there at the top. Looks like it's juicing pretty good just for uh, giggles. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off, hit the reverse. And I see a little bit of pulp coming out and then we're gonna go ahead and hit forward because we did the same thing on the Argus. And uh, see if we get any more juice out of the Kuvings. All right, so the Kuvings looks like it's pretty much all done. And it looks like we got about three minutes and 30 seconds approximately. Three minutes 24 is when I saw it. So literally that's almost half the time it took the juice in the Kuvings than the Argus there. Let's go ahead and turn that guy off, put that spout cut down, 
And uh, let's go ahead and next juice in the final juicer today. And that's the uh, Flexion over here. Let's go ahead and hit the uh, start button there and turn this baby on. All right, start out with the carrot here, drop it in the chute. Man, look at the really lots of movement on the top of this housing here. So, you know, the Flexion machine here, you know, there are other machines on the market that look just like it. They may be ma being made in the same factory or not, I don't know. The apple dunked in fairly easy. I do want to say that cleaning this whole apparatus up here was re a real big pain for me, um, you know, on the initial washing. So far, so good. Looks like it's juicing fairly well. Let's go ahead and dump in another carrot. This one's actually a lot more powerful than the Argus here in actually juicing terms. And this one doesn't look like it's having any major issues sucking the produce in. Well, I say that and now I put the carrot in. The carrot's just sitting up, up and moving up and down. It's not really going in. Let me go ahead and reposition it. Wow, so yeah, even if I reposition the carrot here, all right. <laughs> It went in. Let's go ahead and put an apple. I don't know if I like this whole trap door thing. It's kind of interesting. So you put the apple in up top, you drop it in, and it just sucks down. And at least this machine is actually grinding up the apples quite well. It's not actually sitting and spinning up top. It's actually getting juiced and uh, coming right out. Let's go ahead and put another carrot in there. Now, yeah, we're getting really a lot of moving in this top housing. Uh, not so good in my opinion. Go ahead and put a nice fat down or carrot in there, see what happens. I mean, I do have to say that this unit has a nice solid motor in there. We haven't been able to stop it up, actually. Go ahead and put the last apple in there. And uh, chopping up these apples, you know, pretty much works without any issues. Wow, we have lots of rotational movement on the top housing, man. The only reason why that concerns me is that there's this much rotation. That just means to me that the machine is just not properly balanced. The parts are not properly made precisely to prevent this kind of rotation. And if it's doing this kind of rotation, what other kind of tolerances did they not check out when they made this machine? Such as, you know, how close the plastic on plastic tolerances are. You know, when I took this machine out originally, I saw some plastic scraping on the bottom of the screen here. Now we got a carrot here that's kind of stuck, that's not getting sucked in. So we can try to push it down. <laughs> still not, still kind of sticking a little bit. Oh, and there's our last carrot in there. I mean, this machine is juicing quite well. We haven't been able to stop it up here. All right, let's go ahead and put in our uh, first piece of celery here in the chute. working fairly well now interesting thing actually after using this machine I'm smelling like a weird burning motor smell I didn't notice that on the other two machines actually all right last piece of celery going in yeah it's really kind of stinking like some funny smell all right so this last piece of celery is in there it's just kind of stuck though and it's not sucking in all the way, so I'm trying to have to reposition. It's kind of hard because I can't get my fingers down in the chute here. Wow, this thing's kind of really stuck. This is where the pusher might come in handy. Ugh. All right, pulled it out. Yeah, so this is what was happening. It was just kind of grinding it, but it wasn't sucking it in. Let's go see if I can put it in a different direction here. Yeah, I'll put it upside down. Doesn't like this piece of celery. <laughs> All right, not getting totally sucked in easily. Wow. All right. So this is what's happening when we're putting the celery in there. It's literally just kind of getting crushed, but not juice. So maybe I'll break it into pieces, make it a little bit easier and drop it in there. All right, that finally worked. And it looks like some of the celery is just kind of sticking up at the top there. 
And I don't know if you guys can see, we've still got like lots of movement on the top of this machine here. Let me see if I turn it a little bit, you guys can see better. Oops, we're going to lose the juice. All right, so I really smell a strong motor burning smell. I mean, this is not surprising. This is an inexpensive unit. It's still cool to touch. The Argus, cool to touch. And let's go ahead and hit the reverse. Oops. And then we'll hit the forward button there, like we did on the other machines. Got a little bit more out. And let's go ahead and finally hit the stop button and check our time. So our time says 5.30. So, uh, you know, that took uh, about two minutes longer than the Kuvings, and, uh, you know, the, this unit took about a, maybe a couple, couple minutes longer than the Kuvings as well. So you guys get what you pay for, right? These inexpensive machines aren't quite as efficient at sucking in the produce as the Kuvings. I mean, this was the first one designed to do this, and they spent many hours to make sure it works properly. Anyways, what I want to do next now is we're going to go ahead and compare the unstrained yields. Now I want to caution you guys that unstrained yields may be deceiving because if a juicer is actually juicing and crushing things up and actually putting extra pulp in the juice, the overall yield will appear more than what it should be. And after we strain it out, which we'll be doing, um, you know, you'll see an actual true uh, yield of the machines. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring these guys up front and center and uh, check out to see which one of these juicers actually made more juice. Let's go ahead and do a close up on the yields over on the Argus LE machine. Looks like we're right at about 700 milliliters. Now there is quite a bit of foam on this, uh, you know, in this juice and there's some separation. So it's kind of hard to get like really a true, uh, you know, yield. And then once again over on the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite, looks like we're, you know, maybe a little bit above 700, but once again we got a nice uh, foam layer on top of the juice as well and some separation. And then over on the Flexion, uh, looks like actually we're underneath 700 milliliters. And once again, we actually, I think we have the most foam on the top of this unit. So that's the uh, Flexion there. Here's the Kuvings. And uh, here's the Argus. So yeah. Very interesting. The yields are all fairly similar. Okay. So the yields were actually fairly similar on all of these machines. And man, I got to tell you right here, it's just sitting here. I'm smelling that like burnt motor smell. It's coming from this guy. I mean, the unit got less juice, but has this burnt motor smell. I don't know if I'd like to be smelling that. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and move these aside. And what I want to do for you guys now is actually we're going to go ahead and strain out each juice. Um, you know, because there may be pulp in the juice, also this will kind of separate some of the extra foam layer. So first on the Argus uh, LE, pouring this guy out. And we're pouring this out, and man, there is a significant amount of pulp in here, in my opinion. Like, actually, there's quite a bit of pulp here. I'm like pouring out lots of pulp. So much so that after pouring out the pulp, I mean, it was we were at about 700 milliliters, which is approximately three cups. After pouring out all the pulp, it looks like we're at two and a half uh, cups of juice here. And I don't even know if I could call this a juice. I might even call it a smoothie here. <laughs> I'll show you guys all the pulp that... Uh, was in the Argus right there. So what I want to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and try to shake that out a little bit more. And we're going to go ahead and weigh out our pulp here on a scale. All right, pulp in the strainer there. 132 grams, all right? So we'll pop that up on the screen for you over the Argus, 132. And we're going to go ahead and uh, put this pulp, oh, maybe in the pulp catch bin there. And now we're going to go ahead and pour this juice uh, back in our originally measure, our original measuring cup. Get an accurate reading. That's a strain juice now with uh, basically a little kind of air in there. Next, let's go ahead and pour out the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite C7000. Pouring this out, and yes, we absolutely do got some uh, pulp in there as well, but in my opinion, it's uh, definitely less pulp. All right, 
Yeah, definitely less pulp than the Argus LE there. And if we uh, strain this out, I mean, to me, this looks like it's at least uh, less than half the pulp that was in the Argus LE. And that's what it looks like there on the Kuvings. And we'll weigh this out. 104 grams. And that includes the strainer there. Put the pulp right on top here. And we'll pour this juice back in our original measuring cup. Finally, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, Flexion that appeared to produce the least amount of juice in the initial uh, weigh-in. And when I'm pouring this out, this is a really thick mixture, man. I'd almost say this is like a smoothie instead of a juice, personally. Lots of pulp in here. Wow. This is insane. Actually, and I think I saw a plastic, I, I saw a bit of black something, which is maybe a plastic piece. Def that's definitely not a good thing. This is actually like really uh, thick juice. Now, I do want to let you guys know that the Kuvings does include a strainer or a sieve uh, to strain out your juice. I do not recommend sieving out your juice as you're making it. I do recommend, like I'm doing now, uh, sieve it out actually after the juice is made. That generally works better. The other two machines do not include a sieve, so if you want to strain out your juice and get all this extra pulp out, which, uh, you know, in my opinion, is a considerable amount in the inexpensive machines, you, do, you will want to get one. All right, so there's the, uh, got that strained out pretty good. Let's go ahead and weigh this out, turn on our scale again. And the pulp in this one weighs 137 grams. So this machine made the most amount of pulp. Now, I want to show you guys this, right? This is, this is kind of freaking me out a little bit. Um, if we show the pulp, like just how it was shaking it around, let me go ahead and do a close-up for you guys. It's kind of important. Here's the pulp here. Now, I don't know if you guys could see that, uh, but inside there, right about there, I don't know if you guys could see that, right about there, there's a little speck. And that's a little piece of plastic that actually went into my juice that if I didn't sieve out, I'd be drinking. And that is definitely not cool. Yeah, so you guys saw this plastic speck in there. That, in my opinion, is definitely not cool. It doesn't surprise me too much because I did see plastic shaving off the bottom upon initial removing the product from the box. Let's go ahead and put this pulp in there here. All right, so now finally we're going to go ahead and take out the... Uh, Flexion juice and put it in the original measuring cup here. And now that we've strained all our juices, and I'm glad we strained out any plastic parts. Oh, and I do want to give you guys a measure on this uh, sieve here. Let you guys know that it does weigh out at 87 uh, grams. So this means the Kuvings produced, I think, around 20 grams of pulp and the other units produced you know over double that amount of pulp uh yeah it's kind of insane but now that we've strained out all the pulp let's go ahead and go in for a real comparison of the juice yields all right let's go ahead and check out the actual juice strained yield so over on the argus le looks like it's about uh maybe 650 milliliters over on the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite. Looks like we're about at 675 milliliters. And over on the Flexion unit, looks like we got basically about 605 <laughs> milliliters. So clearly you could see the winner is the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer. So after straining the juice, you guys definitely saw a difference in the yield. The Kuvings actually made the most juice. It also had actually the less pul least pulp in the juice if that is a concern to you. I know a lot of you guys want a, a clean juice without the pulp. Some of you guys might want the pulp but you know these two machines put more pulp in the juice. If you want extra pulp you could always grab some of the pulp that came out of the pulp catch bin and put it back in the juice if your juice does not have enough pulp. Um, I do want to say that straining out the pulp can be kind of a challenge and can take some extra time. That's why I like the Kuvings which is properly designed. 
Now, as I showed you guys, you know, the yield, not so much different on the Kuvings and the Argus, uh, but with the Flexion, it was actually significantly less um, yield, uh, 75 milliliters. In this case, that's like 10% less. In this case, it was actually a lot less. But just because the yield is, oh, John, I could buy this one. It's a quarter, a, a third of the price, and I get only a little bit less yield, you know, the thing is, every juicer has their pros and cons, and I'll be honest with you, you know, if you guys want to spend, uh, you know, a third of the Kuvings to get this unit, it's in your totally right to do that, right? We're free <laughs> to do what we want, but know this, right? This machine weighs less than half the weight of this guy. The motor is really, in my opinion, underpowered. If you saw when we were juicing, it was literally slowing down, you know, and this is only the first time I used it over continual use where you're juicing carrots a lot, especially if you're on a really uh, intensive therapy where you're juicing lots of carrots and apples for the Gerson therapy, for example, where you gotta depend on your juicer every day to make you the juice because these are the foods that can heal you. And this guy breaks, you're out of luck, right? It does have a two year warranty, which is relatively short in my opinion. I mean, this guy has a full 10 year warranty. And let's not even talk about the Flexion that actually made less yield and put plastic shards in my juice. I mean, that to me is just unacceptable. So I'm just gonna have to, although it worked all right, barely clogged up, plastic shards in my juice, I do not accept that. And I don't think you guys should be eating plastic shards either. So, you know, and that's one of the things that you gotta watch out for with these really inexpensive machines. Do you want plastic shards in your juice? Do you want an underpowered motor? Do you want a juicer that may not even have a warranty? Like I could not find any warranty information <laughs> on this machine at all. Maybe it doesn't even have a warranty, right? And that's up to you guys, you know? John, I only got 150 bucks, what should I get, right? Well, hey, you can get a juicer, but it might not last you. And so I would caution you against doing that and encourage you guys to buy something that's actually gonna last, right? So aside from just juicing, which all these three machines do, and you guys just saw, which will allow you to get more fresh fruits and vegetables in your diet, and I encourage every American, every person in the world to include at least one fresh juice a day, especially rich in the leafy green vegetables and other vegetables that unfortunately most people aren't eating enough of. But certain juicers go even further and allow you to make other healthy lifestyle additions to your diet. And the only one of the machines that I'm showing today that allows you to do that is the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite. It includes also a sorbet attachment. And this is a sorbet attachment that is included with your purchase of the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite. This allows you to basically take frozen fruits. So you could take ripe bananas, peel them, freeze them, put them in your freezer, take them out, thaw them out for a little bit, and put them in the machine, and it'll make a nice banana sorbet, which is known, some people call banana ice cream, because the texture is just like that soft serve ice cream that you may used to get when you're a kid, or maybe you still do, at places like McDonald's. But this is 100% fruit. You could add bananas, and you could put in blueberries, and strawberries, mangoes, pineapple, make all these delicious sorbets, so that you could now not eat that ice cream that has monodiglycerides and you know all these bad preservatives and processed sugars. Instead, you could get 100% fruit, which has the sugar on earth, uh, the fruit sugar that is contained with other vital nutrients in the fruit itself, such as fiber, vitamins, and minerals, and more importantly, phytochemicals in the fruits. And this is especially true with the berries that I guys that I want you guys to add into your sorbets. Uh, this attachment will also allow you to make some nut butters. I'll post a link down below where I show how to use the Kuvings with this attachment to make the sorbets and nut butters, so be sure to check the link in the description for a video on that if you are interested. In addition, the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite has an optional accessory that you can purchase with your juicer, and that's this guy right here. This is known as the smoothie attachment. So this smoothie attachment basically takes the place of the screen and it allows you to make low RPM smoothies. So you know, one of the challenges I see with high RPM blenders such as the Vitamix, they run really fast and they really oxidize the food you're eating. They also aerate and put a lot of air bubbles in the food, which in my opinion and based on some of the studies I've seen, lowers uh, some of the valuable phytonutrients in there. Uh, you know, when you use the smoothie attachment in the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer, 
Elite, it allows you to make a low RPM smoothie, so you're doing minimal oxidative damage to your smoothie. I, I made a video using the smoothie attachment, I'll put a link down below to that video, and it came out amazing. It's just a, such nice and creamy and delicious texture, and you have a lot more flavor actually of the ingredients when you're doing it at a low RPM compared to a high RPM. And this is available on the Kuvings, not available on any of the other machines. So see, when you go with the Kuvings, what are you going to get? You're going to get a high-end machine, you know, the machine that was designed properly, that takes less time to use, that actually makes more yield, and you have further options, uh, you know, to, that you could do with it so you could make healthy lifestyle changes. In addition, Kuvings, unlike these two companies, not only supply one cleaning brush, they supply three different cleaning brushes, one style toothbrush, one style like a, a, a circular brush to get in the spouts, and then they provide this innovative screen cleaning tool that can help you save time when cleaning. You put it on the screen there, rotate that around, and these brushes will help you clean the screen. And so, you know, I mean, Kuvings has thought about a lot of things. They didn't just like slap this machine together trying to like copycat another machine on the market like many of these uh, Chinese knockoffs. Uh, that I've seen to date. You know, I, I do hope that one day China has some really good high quality juicers that will actually beat these guys that actually won't shave, uh, you know, plastic in your juice and won't have a motor that sounds like it's supposed to be in a, like a little remote control car or something. And I'd be all with it, but unfortunately at this time I haven't seen that. The last thing I want to do in this episode before I declare the winner of this juice off is I want to go ahead and take apart the machines to show you guys actually what you're going to have to clean when you're done juicing. So. First, with the Argus LE, uh, turn this and uh, take it apart. You know, we do have some uh, residual pulp in the top chute. That's nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Next, let's go ahead and pull this guy off and uh, get this auger out. It's kind of stuck in there pretty good. So this auger, okay, so inside this machine we have a, a piece of carrot, or uh, sorry, celery that did not get juiced. Lots of uh, pulp still on the auger here and then uh, in the on the screen here it looks like you know the screen starting to get blocked up on the inside let me go ahead and take this apart the screen starting to get blocked up on the inside with the carrot pulp so this will reduce the yield if you're going to be juicing higher quantities than what I juice today also because the carrot pulp is so impacted in the small holes of the screen this will make it harder to clean the screen as well that being said I do like this machine because there's actually less screen area than the other two machines and actually yield wise it produced fairly well and then uh, finally we see the uh, main body there and we just basically got the pulp in there. And uh, even with the uncut celery, I mean I'm, I could see some of it starting to get stuck in the chute, but uh, it continued to work. So that's how that one is. Next let's go ahead and look at the Kuvings. Whole Slow Juicer Elite. Let's go ahead and remove this piece. And in this piece, you know, very little pulp you'll need to clean in the bottom of this, uh, this guy here. Next let's go ahead and pull out this auger here. Nice durable auger. And on the bottom of this auger, you can definitely see some of the residual pulp we'll have to clean. And then underneath, there's definitely some uh, very little pulp actually underneath the auger. And once again, we got that stainless steel lining, so you're not going to get plastic particles in your juice uh, like the one next door. Uh, next, we got the screen. So this is what I like about the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite. Everything you're going to have to clean, that's the major problem area to clean. The hardest part is this screen. And in this screen, because it has a bottom on it, all the pulp is contained inside the screen. So I basically like to scrape out all this pulp, put it in the pulp catch bin, which then goes in my compost, and then scrape or, uh, you know, clean out the screen. You know, if you look on the inside of the screen, unlike this guy here, if you guys can see that, there's very little pulp residue in comparison. I mean, the holes are clogged up, and this will take some uh, cleaning to get it out. And in addition... You can see some of these strings of the celery are starting to come out, but if we juice more celery, in my opinion, uh, you know, it would end up backing up. So I do not recommend juicing uncut celery. Finally, removing the bowl here. It's relatively clean. We've got the automatic wiping blade here. And then in the bowl here, we can see some of the celery sticking out. But this is going to be really easy to clean because everything was uh, kept basically in the juicing screen. The top of the motor housing there, uh, clean. There's no juice. On the Argus, once again, there's no juice either. Over to the uh, Flexion here, let's go ahead and take this guy apart. Once again, very little uh, pulp on the bottom of that part here. Let's go ahead and take out this auger here. On this auger, this auger is actually fairly clean, that's kind of impressive. Um, underneath here, uh, also pretty clean. 
Although I am seeing some actually uh, scraping on the bottom of this auger. <laughs> That's probably where some of the plastic came from that was in my juice. And then uh, once again on the screen part here, relatively clean. There is a particle of a uh, celery that did not get juiced. And, you know, um, yeah, cleaning this is not going to be too bad. There's some pulp kind of scratched in there. And, you know, I'm not exactly sure where that plastic came from. It either came from the bottom of this uh, screen here or the bottom of the auger. So I think there's some uh, plastic contact. Let's see, looking at the auger, it looks all right. So, yeah, that's that. And then finally, we got uh, the bowl of this machine. Look at the bowl of that machine, right? Wow, that's going to be a bear to clean. There's, like, lots of particles, lots of little bits that didn't get juice. Um, you know, lots of pulp that actually came out in the juice that actually didn't go out of the machine. And this is uh, evidenced by the pulp that I strained out. It had the most pulp, right? On the bottom of this motor base, uh, you know, at the top of that, I don't see any juice particles either. So what did we learn taking all the machines apart? Well, I think we've learned that basically I think the cubings of all these three machines are going to be a little bit easier to clean. I mean, it will still take you a couple minutes. But overall, this one's got, oh man, then look at these celery strings, right? There's whole uncut celery strings that are actually quite long in this machine. So juicing celery uncut is definitely going to cause you some challenges uh, with the Flexion. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the end of this episode. You guys pretty much learned about all these machines. And, you know, I know I'm going to get an email, John, what about this machine? Or what about that machine? And basically, I'll refer people to this episode, you know, pretty much... The majority of the machines I've seen come in from China, whether it's the Argus, the Flexion, or one made in a similar factory, a factory down the street, you know, in Ningbo or whatever, um, in China, they're pretty much the same, right? They're not like significantly better. They're always going to be maybe not as good as the main brands. They're generally going to be lacking in quality. They're generally not going to have a long a warranty. And generally, in my opinion, they're not going to last as long either, right? But, I mean, that should not be a surprise to you guys if you guys are trying to pay, like, less than half the price of uh, the real machine, right? You guys get what you pay for and understand that. And if you guys want to waste your money on an inexpensive machine, you guys have the whole right to do that. And I'm glad I showed you guys actually which one of these machines, if you do want to get a cheap one, is better. But that being said, I would encourage you guys to use your money wisely and buy a machine that's not going to be landfill garbage in just a few years after it breaks down and you're not able to get warranty or support or parts for it, right? And so something like Kuvings, you know, 10-year warranty, you're going to be covered. And even more so when you buy from discountjuicers.com. And I would encourage you guys to support me. If you guys enjoyed this episode, it took me literally hours to source the produce, clean the produce, wash the produce, um, make this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please support me in my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com so I can continue to make these educational comparison videos I've compared more juicers literally than anyone on the planet and I'm glad to do this for you guys but I need your guys' support by making your purchase at discount juicers because that allows me to continue to do what I love to do and if nobody bought from me anymore then I won't be able to make these videos anymore and have to get a real job which I probably wouldn't like so much so hopefully you guys have appreciated this video and if you do choose to purchase a Kuvings or other juicer, please visit our website at discountjuicers.com to do so. I thank you guys in advance that will purchase from me, and I want to thank you guys who have already purchased from me in the past so I can continue my mission to getting out proper and truthful information on the juicers as well as eating fresh fruits and vegetables, which are the best foods on the planet. So with that, I'm going to have to declare the winner of this juice-off comparison, right? And I think the winner is pretty much clear, right? The winner in this juice-off comparison is the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer. So in every category, it blows away these two other machines, except for the price, of course. But you guys get what you pay for. And, you know, you get a 10-year warranty compared to a 2-year warranty on this side. And I don't know how long of a warranty on this side. You don't get motor burning smells, like cheap motor burning smells. It was pretty strong, like I got on this side. You don't get excessive pulp in your juice, like I got on this side. You don't get a really inexpensive motor. I mean, if you guys buy this and pick this up, you'd be like, wow, that's pretty light. I mean, it's almost as light as like your toaster, like to toast in it. Those are pretty light machines, right? You're going to get a good solid machine with a nice power that's going to power through all the produce you want to juice. And more importantly, be dependable. Because if you want to make lifestyle changes, dependability is one of the most important things because you want to be consistent at juicing each and every day. And if you got a broken juicer, 
you're unable to do that. So if you guys want to learn more about the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite, be sure to check in the description down below. I have many videos on the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite, compare it to other different major brands of juicers and how it can save you time and also allow you to make things like sorbets and smoothies and uh, allow you to eat healthier. So I guess uh, with that, if you guys enjoyed this episode, I would encourage you guys to give me a thumbs up. This will encourage me to make more comparison videos, even though now I got at least another half hour of cleaning and now I got a lot of juice to drink and I'll probably strain this juice even further to make sure there's no plastic shards in there. Um, uh, give this video a thumbs up. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below to be notified of my new and upcoming episodes I've coming out. I better be five to seven days. You know, we'll never know where I'll show up or what juicers, vacuum blenders, or even dehydrators I'll be testing out. Um, also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge, including my top 10 tips on how to juice properly in any vertical slow juicer so you don't run into problems. Also, be sure to check my other comparison videos if you are looking to buy a juicer. Also, be sure to use the coupon code WEIGHTLOSS. If you guys are buying a Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite, use the code WEIGHTLOSS, W-E-I-G-H-T-L-O-S-S, -S, all lowercase. Uh, in the coupon code section of our website for a $20 discount on the Kuvings so you guys can get it at a most affordable price. Um, I guess with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com and before I go, i got to drink uh, some of the juice out of the Kuvings. Mm. Wow, that's actually quite good. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.